Working on electronic equipment has many hazards associated with it that can cause injury and or death. Please do not work on energized equipment unless you take proper precautions. Working on such equipment is done at your own risk and not at the prompting of information from this or any other YouTube channel. Hello and welcome back to Poor Man's Electronics Bench. It's that time of year in North America. Time to turn on your air conditioning unit, keep your fingers crossed, and hope for the blessed relief of cooling from compressing and expanding a gas that can transfer BTUs from point A to point B. Point B is your air conditioning compressor unit, a household appliance that is usually taken for granted until something goes drastically wrong, causing you to call a service that may or may not repair it in a timely and affordable manner. A few things you can do are some preventative maintenance cleaning measures and if you are familiar and comfortable with working with appliances and the hazardous voltages that may be involved, you can replace some items that do degrade over time and if they totally fail can either prevent proper operation or damage other items that are costly to replace. I will cover the work to depower two AC compressor units, gain access to internal electrical connections, check for hazards, discharge and remove capacitors in both units. A following episode will cover comparative testing of the 20 plus year old capacitors with new components with a variety of capacitor testers and trying to evaluate if they are in fact past their best if used by dates. If this content may interest you, please stay tuned. Hello, I am going to do this video as a voiceover instead of trying to talk, hold the camera and do many things working at the same time. I have the opportunity to work on two different air conditioning compressor units on my property. This old one here was installed probably in the mid 90s, purchased probably about 1990, installed and put in a service in the mid 90s. It's a two and a half ton unit, not, def not necessarily a high efficiency, but it is still functioning, still holding free on well. and. Motor's been running, it's been pumping BTUs out without an issue, but I found over the years that it's probably time to do some maintenance on it. It's definitely as far as placing the capacitors. One of the first things I'm going to do is I have the opportunity to have two different non-contact or near-field voltage testers. One of them is a Klein Tools. It's a dual range, it's a low and high voltage. I'm not I haven't used it enough to really get familiar to which one is which, but I tend to fumble through going through the settings on either one. One's a lower, one's a higher voltage, but the first thing I'm doing is checking to make sure that there's no nothing energized on the cabinet itself. It may seem to be a funny process to you, but it's something you should do just out of a matter of safety. It's They may or may not be grounded and wiring and they also may have an internal short that you don't know about so if it's energized you want to know about it going into it. I'm playing with it back and forth they've still got to figure out how to get this functioning quite properly so I'm probably going to speed up the video a little bit and go to go to the next part of it which is going to be gaining access to the outdoor electrical disconnects which always should be nearby your units they have a little bit of a view of the second unit there and both units are connected to AC disconnects very close to them that one I traced the cable out to so I know it's that particular unit this particular disconnect just has a copper bus bar that pulls out some of them are like this, some of them might be a circuit breaker, some of them might be a fuse. This tester seems to indicate that there's some energized electricity inside that cover. If you notice on the upper left, there was uh, the bus was in the on position. Also, if you notice the connection points that's made so the bottom connections are the actual electrical connections going to the unit and the top would be an idle position to put that back into so it's you have 
off on the lower it would be on the upper left marked off if that's plugged in the copper buses will go into the two top positions but the best thing to do for me is to just pull it out leave it out that way I know for sure that it is disconnected and not in the right position so the next little bit is going to be fumbling getting the screws off I did have a problem with one of them so I'm gonna fast forward through it but you want to make sure you've got your right size screw bits that one has some interference it's at an angle and it's also got some interference with the cover itself <clears throat> After some fumbling around, I was finally able to get into a good position where I can get that screw out. And just making sure the bits are all sized to the proper proper head sizes. I finally managed to get the panel off and as usual since it's outdoors it's got some leaves blown into it from the top even though I tried to keep it covered it's got cobwebs from spiders chasing the bugs that go inside of it and <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a mess so that's all something that, that's going to be cleaned up in the course of doing things I'm not going to concern myself with the cleaning right now as much as just getting the capacitors out this is another AC voltmeter I have there are quite a few on the market that'll have a function built into them where it's a, a near contact voltage or no contact voltage tester this particular one if you set the thumb wheel all the way up to the top It says NCV or no contact voltage tester. You have to make sure that thumb wheel settle all the way up to the top and if it times out. Then for leads I always like to use on AC powered devices one that's got a clip on it and then the other one with a probe tip so that way I can clip onto a ground or return with put my other hand well away from what I'm testing and then probe with the other hand so in this case I am checking to make sure that there's no voltage on the contactor and the capacitors what I am going to do just to make sure that this voltage tester is working is I am going to re-energize that contactor relay by reinserting my disconnect Just as a double precaution, I'm going to make sure that the meter's working, and then, the, and as you can see, it is giving me a clear warning that that contactor's leads are now energized. So I pull it out, go back, and we are depowered. That is going to be the initial part. Now the now that the extraction of the capacitors are going to come into play and my video got spliced or edited here so you have to bear with me a minute while I return to it. And with some editing I'm coming back in with the, the Shaco Vision camera. I was in here for a little bit. If you notice I've got a resistor. It's a 500 ohm 100 watt resistor that I had left over. And I am going through the process of discharging the capacitors. Now these capacitors don't normally, they don't have DC on them, they're AC capacitors. But depending on when the compressor was shut off and the contactor disconnected at the last part of the cycle, it could have a little bit of DC on there, enough to, enough to really give you too much of a surprise if you didn't discharge them so I'm giving them five seconds a piece on each capacitor this particular air conditioning system has two separate capacitors one is for the called the Herm the hermetically sealed motor or basically the compressor and then the other one is for the cooling fan the Herm is 
almost always a bigger one. This one I think is about a 30 microfarad and the fan is about a 5. And just taking the screws out. Blundering through things and figuring out that I should have left some hardware in to pull the connections off the pins. Uh, by the way, take take good notes or pictures when you're doing this and so you can restore the wiring back to where it was or you're going to be looking at the schematic of the unit on the cover or tracing wiring out until you get, the, get them in the proper position. I had to put a mounting screw back in at each capacitor to to get them to sit down a little bit just so to sit in place just so I can grab the connectors with some needle some long nose and grab them pull them off like I said this particular unit I think I bought about 1990 or so then it's actually sat in a box for about five years because my existing one was still working, but I knew it wasn't going to last forever because the existing one was very old. And these two are getting extracted. Taking a look at them, trying to get the camera to focus. They're having some difficulties. This camera doesn't focus as good as another one that I use normally. It's actually my Samsung S8 phone, and usually you can guide the automatic focus by touching that part of the screen where the item's in view, but this one was being really cranky, so I found that if I zoom in a certain bit and then try to get it, that I've got it right there. That one's a 3 microfarad from the reading, and then this one, it's got enough ink left on it to say it's a 35 microfarad. I think they're both made in the USA, but as you can tell by the age of that canister, it's at the end of its life. You wouldn't really trust that to stay in service much longer. And I'm going back to the schematic. That's usually these things all have a schematic on the inside of the lid, but the schematic does show capacitors, but it does not show values anywhere. So <laughs> you really, it's a good idea if you do get in there to jot down take some good pictures hopefully hold on to them and then possibly even jot down what the capacitor values are on that schematic with a good <clears throat> probably a ballpoint pen because even something like a sharpie you think is permanent well the sharpies over time out in the weather even if they don't get rained on or exposed to the sun the, the oil and the ink just goes away label maker tape wouldn't be a bad idea either p-touch label maker tape some of them are made for outdoor purposes actually <clears throat> the motor windings capacitors all sorts of stuff color codes for wiring <laughs> you usually have a pretty decent schematic but the only problem was is it didn't show capacitor values anywhere so we're going to get away from that we're going to move on to unit number two this one is a newer unit i got this about Sold about 2006. It's a two-ton, 24,000 BTU. It's supposed to be a higher efficiency unit. <clears throat> I spared you the pain of getting the cover off. Didn't take too much. I just had to get the right portion off. And this one has a two-section capacitor. I'm going and checking again. This one. <clears throat> I did that on purpose just to just to show you to do it checked it it's energized I'm going to go and disconnect my service disconnect and like I said on these I like to pull them out leave them out that way I know that there's absolutely no chance of any any conductivity occurring go back and check and it's nice and quiet And this just takes a discharging as well. This one, the lead, some of the leads are harder to get to. I think I was able to clip onto one of to one of them. The 
giveaway on these capacitors as far as which one's the common is a common always almost always is going to have the most terminal pins available on it. The common that one on the top and my phone was giving me grief at this point. It kept on shutting the video off. I don't know why so anyways I've got the one capacitor discharged by letting the clip sit on there for a little bit and I'm having a problem clipping onto the one at back so what I'm just going to do is hold it on that terminal for about 10 seconds. As you can see that capacitor is also very well aged. It's its body is definitely rusted and can't really say it's going to be in reliable condition being like that. So that's just got a piece of plumber's tape holding it in which is pretty common. So you have to size the right fastener for it. Give it a zip. And just take a good note of it, but like I said, the the red wire is more likely than not the common. I'll show you the marking a little marking is a little later when I get it off. It's got a it's got four connection pins on it. The Herm or the compressor usually has three and then the the actual cooling fan has probably got two. And we'll go over it and we'll see the fan has got two as you can see. The common has got four, and the Herm has three. And I'll go over, I'll go over the markings on it a little later to see what I can see what I can get off of it. But those are going to be our three victims for devices to test or components to test and see. What kind of shape they're in compared to new components. So that's going to be the next part of the video. I am going to conclude part one here as producing this video was a bit of a chore and I'm going to set up to do my testing on my old and new capacitors to do a battery of tests on them, pardon the pun, but we will see what kind of shape those old ones are in compared to new choices I've purchased in order to replace them. So if you'll be interested in that content, please return for part two, and I thank you for viewing. This content is available on YouTube and odyssey.com. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Hope you return soon.